everybody, this is Creative Two Time Mom, and today's video is going to be all about the books we read in the months of August and September. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin and this is Creative Two Time Mom. This channel is all about homeschooling, parenthood, and thriving in the day to day. At the end of every month I post a video like this one sharing with you the books that I read as well as the books that we read in our homeschool with our kiddos. Just the read alouds because otherwise these videos would get extremely long. <laughs> but I missed August because uh, my husband and I both had COVID and if you missed that story I will link that video down below. That was sort of a whirlwind experience. So I'm going to try to keep September's video nice, short, and sweet but I have two months to cover, Oops, two months. So <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. So I'm gonna try to go uh, chronologically to keep my thoughts in line. So we'll start with August. In the month of August, I was finishing out my summer reading list. I think I still had three books that I read in August that were on that list. I will link that video down below because there was some really good books from that summer reading list. The first one that I finished was Better Together. Now, I have talked about this book before. This is by Pam Barnhill, and she's sort of known as the um, one of the founders of the Morning Basket movement. I'm going to be recording a video about our Morning Basket here later this morning, so be on the lookout for that one. I reread this one every summer because it really gets me in the mindset of what I want to include. Our Morning Basket over the last couple of years, I used to post a video every month and it was changing every month, but over the last couple of years, we've really found our rhythm and honed in on the things that we enjoy learning about and the things that have really enriched our lives. But this is a great resource, even if you have a pretty good rhythm. She includes um, a lot of resources that I never would have thought about before, and I have pulled from this one a lot. So I reread this one every summer. Purely by the fact that I reread it every summer, you probably know I just absolutely love this book. I think it's pretty inexpensive. I don't remember this one um, being a whole lot. And for the amount of use I have gotten out of it, it's really a great one to include in your library. The next book I read in the month of August was A Waking Wonder by Sally Clarkson. I did a review on this book last summer so I think this is the second year I have read this one and again it's one of those that I read in the summer as a way of refocusing my mind on the homeschool year. I wasn't sure I was going to like it when I initially read it uh, but Sally has this way of drawing you in and making you feel like she's mentoring you and this book especially I really felt that way and that she was mentoring me and how to make our homeschool come alive for our kids not to just educate them but to excite them about the world I think that's so important that's something I strive for in my homeschool that I am yet to arrive at that as much as I would like to but she really challenges you as a homeschool parent to awaken your kids to wonder in the world. And in that process, she has really challenged me to be awakened. So it's sort of a, it's a mentoring text in how to bring that life back into your homeschool, that wonder, that joy back into your homeschool. This is the second summer I have read that one and it really helped me to, um, it was a breath of fresh air, I guess you could say, because it reminded me I'm not just filling their minds, but I'm lighting a spark, which is a very Charlotte Mason-y type idea. Um, and it sounds sort of cliche, but once you see that switch in your homeschool, it changes everything. The next book that I read in the month of August was Vertical Marriage by Dave and Ann Wilson. Now, this is a book that I had never heard of before. It ended up in a free basket at the library, so I thought, okay, I'll grab that one and check it out. This was on my summer reading list this year. It follows the journey of Dave and Ann, and it's on their 10th wedding anniversary, and she says to him, you know, I... I don't think I'm in love with you anymore. And he is completely blindsided this, by this. He has been working as a chaplain for a uh, professional football team and Anne has been at home with the kids and homemaking. They have started ministries together. They um, started a church together, I think if I remember correctly. 
and they sort of have this from the outside this picture perfect life and she reveals to him that there are definitely fractures in their marriage and it's their journey of coming back together what they have learned about each other rebuilding that communication they had drifted really far apart in their busy lifestyle and we're just not connecting i think we can all identify that there are seasons of life where jobs and kids and commitments start to crowd in and we can really easily drift apart from our partners so these are the principles that they use to rebuild a solid marriage solid marriage that communication and that understanding with each other and that searching each other's hearts out as they searched for the Lord together. Um, some relationship books I feel like can be almost like what I would call brain candy. The information is sweet, the ideas are very cliche, um, you get really excited about it in the moment but there is no lasting substance. This book I felt like broke that mold and there were some really good solid principles to be followed in any marriage. The last book that I personally read in the month of August was called Rewilding Motherhood. I'll be entirely truthful, I did not get past chapter three in this book. This was a review book and I will leave my written review down below if you want any more information, but I was completely um, disgusted <laughs> by this book. I know I was reading some reviews by others and they just loved it. The concept is breaking off the molds of being a mother and being a wife and finding out who you are and finding out who you are in Christ, but I felt like it was a very selfishly motivated book. I didn't feel like it really tied into Christianity at all. In fact, um, the author really bashed a lot of things about Christianity. There were so many red flags early on in the beginning of this book that I didn't even waste my time reading through it. I will, like I said, link my full review down below if you have any more questions, but I wouldn't pick that one up. I wouldn't even touch it. <laughs> So I guess from here, I will just keep talking about the books that I read in September, and then at the end of this video, I will share the read-alouds that we did. Maybe I'll break it up that way. So for September, the first book that I picked up was called Help, I'm Drowning, and it's another one by Sally Clarkson. Now this book just came out in September, and I was part of the review team for this one. I have to say I was really excited when I saw it because at the time that I first reviewed Awaking Wonder was during the pandemic in 2020 and at the time that I was reading this I thought great now how is she living this out throughout the cir circumstances of everything that was chaotic. I knew that book had been written prior to the lockdowns and so I was curious how she was applying some of those concepts in this sort of new world uh, gray area that we're living in right now and I felt like this new book that she has out really addressed some of those issues although it's not focused solely on homeschooling this new book help I'm drowning is focused on the circumstances of life that we all walk through be it a prodigal child be it the loss of a job be it the loss of a friend or the um, dissolving of a marriage, all these storms of life that we walk through, be it a pandemic, she addresses that a lot in this book because this book was written in 2020. There is a lot of meat in this book. She doesn't shy away from the difficulties of life. However, she does hone in on uh, who is walking with you through each of these things. So each chapter is a different scenario, a different storm of life that you may walk through, that you may find yourself in. And like I said before, Clarkson has this way of sort of mentoring you through each of these stages of life. You don't feel like you're being preached at. You don't feel like you're being given um, the cliche right answer as much as you have a friend sort of talking you through what this would look like and how to still have hope in each of those situations. I will link my full review down below, but I have to say, as far as Sally Clarkson books go, this is probably my, my top book, probably. I don't know if it's because of the circumstances of the world currently, but I felt like this was the book that spoke most to my heart. 
The next book that I read in September was called Christmas at the Amish Bake Shop. Now this book was a compilation of three novellas and again I was on the preview team for this one so I will link my full review down below. Typically I don't like books that are set up this way with short little um, novellas. I feel like there's still a lot, a lot of room for character development. It leaves me sort of dissatisfied, I guess would be the word. But this one was focused around Christmas, so I had to grab it. I don't know what it is. I think it's the end of summer, the beginning of the fall, where I'm just like, I am so ready for the holidays. So I signed up to be on the review crew for this book, and I have to say I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised. Of course, you can only do so much character development in a short little novel, um, but I was surprised by how well each of the authors did develop their characters, did develop the backstory, did develop the relationships. Of course, they're short, sweet, it's light. These sort of Amish fiction books are very light reading, but this one, I have to say, I felt was like one of the better developed for having such short little sections. It was one of the better written books that I've seen in this category of um, just compilations. I was happy with that one. And then the next book, of course, sticking with the Christmas theme, I don't even know how this came about. Um, yes, I do. I got approved for that review crew and then my library happened to get in a book that I have been wanting for about six months and it was focused on Amish Christmas Christmas fiction as well. So I went back to back, Amish fiction, set at Christmas time. This is the Amish Cookie Club Christmas by Sarah Price. Now I had originally reviewed the first book in this series and then I didn't, there was no reviews for the next one. So I asked the library to order this one, which they did. I have about 20 pages. I'm going to finish it today. So I thought I would share with you. Sarah Price Prior to the first Amish Cookie Club book, I had never even heard of her. You know, you hear of the big uh, authors like Beverly Lewis, Cindy Woodsmall. Sarah Price wasn't one of those, and I started looking into her more after this book. She actually has quite a collection of novels. Now, this follows the story of four women who have what they call a cookie club, and they bake cookies for a local store, that the proceeds go to the Amish Aid Society. They also bake cookies for the Christmas pageant, all these little community events. They are the cookie club and they're kind of the honorary um, cookie founders for each little community event, right? So the one woman, her daughter Bethany, is very shy and she goes to work for one of the other ladies in the cookie club who does tours. She does Amish meals for tours. And she really starts to come out of her shell. And it's sort of this development of her character and who she becomes. She's very young. She's 19, very quiet. But it's this development of how she comes into her own as a woman. Very cute story, of course. Great light reading. Kind of a contradiction of that uh, Sally Clarkson book where everything is heart work, I would say. If you're going through something like that, this is a great little book to just have some lightness to your reading. Of course, during the holidays, I'm always looking for something like this that is just a light read to enjoy in the evenings. And the last book that I read in September was For the Children's Sake by Susan Schaefer McCulley. This is on my fall reading list, which I will link down below. I just shared that one with you guys last week, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. This is a reread for me, and I shared in that video that I wanted to do some more homeschooling education throughout the year, and I had thought in my head, if I could reread one book, what would it be? And that was this one. It's been about three or four years since I've read through it. Now, Macaulay takes the concepts of Charlotte Mason and sort of condenses them down for the homeschool mom, and she takes out the most foundational concepts, I feel like, and really starts to flesh them out. This is a foundational concept. What would this look like in your homeschool? Why is it important? Why did Charlotte Mason put a focus on this concept and how can it be lived out in modern day? 
I am so glad I went back and read this one. It's been a really long time since I read it. And I remember my first reading being a shift in my mindset of how to light that spark and bring back the beauty in our homeschool, those beautiful things like artist and composer, etc. This one, I would say if you are just starting out homeschooling, if you're just starting out exploring Charlotte Mason, if you're looking for a way to bring that spark back into your homeschool, definitely check out your library because they will probably have a copy. If not, I would say it's well worth picking up your own copy. Okay, I'm going to go through read alouds really quick because I feel like that was a really long couple of months. The first book that we read in August, we finished out the Green Ember series with Embers In by S.D. Smith. I have to tell you guys, this series hooked me from beginning to end. I think I was as excited as the kids to read every day. It's a very epic, sweeping tale of these rabbits who are trying to save their kingdom from the wolves. Cannot recommend this one highly enough. We got the first book for free on Kindle, and then we had to keep purchasing because we were so excited to find out how it would finish off. Embers and brought a great culmination to the series and it really wrapped everything up. In September, we read some shorter books and the first one was Maru of the Winter Caves by Anne Turbel. We are going through Story of the World Volume 1 right now, which is Ancient Times, and I have really struggled to find good historical fiction for that ancient time period. So when I saw that this one was recommended and that my library had it, I was really excited to grab it. Now we've got Maru and her family who are traveling from the winter grounds to the summer grounds and then they have to stay there because her mom is pregnant and her mom's about ready to have the baby and so they get a late start back home and it's everything that happens. Um, it's how they survived. So it's about, you know, family and tragedy and overcoming and she is actually the one that is the heroine in this story and how she ends up saving her family. I was really surprised. This is sort of set in the, I guess I would, you would say Ice Age possibly. It, it was hard to find good books set in that time period and this one definitely hooked us from beginning to end. After that, you guys know I have been trying to alternate some historical fiction with just some offbeat fun reads. And so we picked up The Magician's Elephant by Kate DiCamillo. I have mixed feelings about this one. You have a magician who brings this elephant to the theater. Somehow he makes him materialize. And this little boy who has been told by a fortune teller that the elephant will lead him to his sister. Both of his parents have died. He's been told that his sister is dead. But now this fortune teller is telling him that an elephant... And uh, this is set in a place where there would absolutely be no elephants. This is set in Paris, I think. And this elephant is going to take him to his sister. So he's thinking, how can that be true? And is she still alive? And it's the story of the elephant reuniting family. Now, I felt like it was a pretty sad tale. Um, it was written very in a not, I don't know. It was just written in an offbeat sort of way. And I felt like it was so sad, but then I was talking to my husband and he was like, well, no, it had redemptive quality in the end because it creates these family, this family out of these people who otherwise would have not been so involved in each other's lives. And they sort of become a family throughout this book. And I thought, oh my goodness, I never even thought about that. He had great insight into the book because he was reading it with us. Um, so I'm on the fence about this one. I think you should check it out. But yet then again... I don't really know. <laughs> if you've read this book before, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think and maybe what your insight is into this one. We had an audiobook going in the car and that was Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. I just happened to grab this one because I saw it on the library shelf. It's an imaginary cat that comes back in this little boy's life while he's going through some very difficult family circumstances. His parents um, are running out of money and they're living out of their car and his imaginary cat, who was his friend when he was younger, comes back into his life and is sort of wreaking havoc. Now I expected this one to be lighthearted, 
funny, focused on the cat and the cat's antics. It's actually really, really sad. I felt like it brought up some good topical conversation, but definitely be prepared. This will bring up some tough subjects with your kiddos. So what's next? Well, currently I am reading Balanced and Barefoot by Angela J. Haskam. I just started this last night, so I'm only in the first chapter. It's been on my reading list for a while, and um, I'm hoping it really focuses on the idea of nature, nature deficiency and how to restore that wonder in our children. That's sort of my hope for this book. I'm not really sure where it's going. And then as far as a fiction read, I am reviewing a book on my Kindle right now called Thursday's Child. Now this book is written by Noelle Stretfield, I believe, who is the author of ballet shoes, dancing shoes. There's a whole shoes series written by this author. And as I was looking into it, I think this is actually a republication. I have been delightfully surprised so far about where it's going and it's very well written. So I'm anxious to finish it off and share that one with you guys in October. So hopefully I didn't ramble on too long. Those were all the books that we read in August and September and from now on I'm hoping to stay caught up with these review book videos for you guys. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know have you read any of these and what your impressions were or was there any books here in this video that you would like to check out? I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.